there, it's Chris Leverdine, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make levitating candles, no magic required. What you will need is the core of a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll, a pair of scissors, as well as paint, either acrylic paint or spray paint. You don't need both, it's just your preference. I decided to try both of them to see which one was better for the project, and they actually both worked out well. You're also going to need flameless tea lights or LED tea lights, as well as a hot glue gun and some extra hot glue sticks. Also clear beading string, some tape, and a needle. And that's everything that you need, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is grab your cardboard cylinder, either your paper towel roll or your toilet paper roll. And if it is a paper towel roll, it's a little too long for this project, so you're going to want to cut it in half. That way it's the size of a toilet paper roll, and if you have a toilet paper roll, then you can just skip this step. Unless, of course, you want the candle to be as tall as a paper towel roll, then that you don't have to cut it in half. It's totally up to you, but I wanted my candles to be about this size. So the next step is to paint them, and I'm going to spray paint one black and paint one white, just to see the differences. So I went outside and I spray painted one black, then let it dry, and while it was drying, I hand painted the other one with white acrylic paint. And then while the white one was drying, I grabbed the black one, which is already dry, my hot glue gun, and I began making the drops on my candle. And these are going to resemble wax melting from your candle. And it does require a bit of hot glue because you're going to want to use a generous amount. That way the drops could stick out from the rest of the candle and it'll be more visible. So I would suggest, well it depends on how many you're going to make, but basically the more candlesticks you're going to make, the more glue sticks you're going to need. I think I used almost a whole glue stick for two candles, and this is what it looks like after you're done making those drops. Then I'm going to grab my white candle and do the exact same thing, just along one rim. I'm going to make a bunch of drops, all varying in length and also nice and thick. What I do is I make a drop, I go down, and then I go back on that drop, I go up, and then along the rim as well. That way it looks more, I don't want to say more natural, but it looks more realistic that the wax is also along the rim of the candlestick. So that's an important detail that you should not skip. And after you're done making the drops and they're all dry, grab your paint again and then hand paint over the drops that you just made. And after that, you're going to set it aside for it to dry. And meanwhile, I'm going to do the exact same thing to my black candlestick. I just decided to go with the acrylic paint this time. Um, the difference between using the spray paint and the acrylic paint when you originally paint the cardboard is... When you use acrylic paint, you're going to leave streaks on the cardboard because you're hand painting it on and it's always not going to be even. Whereas when you use a spray can and spray paint, everything is going to be even. So it just depends on what you like better. I'm pretty sure that it's cheaper to get the acrylic paint and just paint it on as opposed to buying spray paint and then having to go outside and spray it. But it's totally up to you. You can tell the difference. The white one has streaks, whereas the black one is more even. And after you're done painting both of them and they have dried, then you're going to grab a needle and poke a hole wherever you want. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, just pick one side. Make sure that you're about an inch below the rim. Poke a hole and then go directly to the other side, poke another hole, grab your clear string, string it through, determine how much string you're going to need in order for it to dangle from your ceiling, then you're going to even out both ends and make a knot, and after you've created that knot, then you have created a floating object. Ooh. But of course you're not done yet, you're going to also need the candle, and you can just actually set it on top of the string, but I want extra support. So I decided to get some masking tape, tape it onto the bottom of the candle, making sure that there's still enough room on the sides, well on both sides, that way that part of the tape can stick to the inside of the candle. So after you've taped the tea light, place the tea light inside of your candle, making sure that the tape sticks to the side of the cardboard, that way you can have the tea light nice and propped up. 
And after that, you're done. Time to do the same thing to the white candle. Again, you're going to grab your needle, poke a hole through two sides, then grab your clear string, string it through, then determine how much string you need, tie a knot at the end of your string. Woo, magic! <laughs> and then after that, you're going to tape your tea light, place the tea light inside of your cardboard candle, and then also make sure that the tape sticks to the inside of the cardboard. That way your candle is nice and propped up. Turn on your tea light and boom! You have made awesome candles, but not just any awesome candles, amazing floating candles. Now all that's left to do is to find a way to hang it from your ceiling. Then you have magical candles levitating without having to use Wingardium Leviosa. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up and also click that red subscribe button if you have not already so I can see you next time. Bye!